Well, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to 2 Kings chapter 4. We're going to read there 1 through 7. Just while you're turning, I'm going to give you the 10 signs that you know you're broke, all right? American Express calls and says, leave home without it. Now, some of these might date me a little bit, but anyway, the word free always grabs your attention. Utility companies don't call and ask you to switch. Hmm. You steal toilet paper from public restrooms, hopefully not at church. Just saying. You finally clean out your car hoping to find some change. Hmm. You think a lottery ticket is an investment. Oh, that's a good sign you're broke. Your baloney has no first name. You think McDonald's is fine dining. Hmm. McDonald's supplies you with all your kitchen condiments. And the last one, at communion, you ask for seconds. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the scripture. Second Kings chapter 4. This is a lady that was broke. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. And now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. This is an amazing miracle that happened in this woman's life. I don't know, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes for you to really put yourself in somebody else's situation, but can you imagine what it was like for this widow woman who was about to lose her two sons to a creditor? And then God does this amazing miracle where not only her debts are paid off, but now she has money to live on. You know what? We're in a time right now when a lot of people are going through some kind of great challenge in their life. Well, for some of them, it's like this widow woman. They're in a financial difficulty but for a lot of people, it's dealing with sickness or it's dealing with some family situation or dealing with something else that's going on in their life. And here's the thing, God knows. You know, in this story, there's an obvious financial miracle that takes place in this woman's life. And I, I want to tell you very plainly tonight, that God still does those kinds of miracles. And if you're in a financial need tonight, I want you to know from the word of the Lord that God sees, God cares, and he still is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He still can step in and do a miracle. It's amazing. You know, who would have ever dreamed this up? God can find so many ways. He can do it in ways you never imagined, but he can meet that need. But I want us to take this principle from this passage, and I want to consider this story in regard to spiritual things. You know, there's so many good things that God has blessed us with. Ephesians 1 and 3 says that we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And you may not realize it as a believer, but you really are blessed. Blessed with every spiritual blessing. You've got the love of God, the peace, the joy of the Lord. So many good things that God has poured into you and given you. You've got the word of God. 
Oh, what a treasure. This is, the Bible declares itself that it is better than silver or gold. See, this world, they say, oh, we'll take the gold, you keep your Bible. I'm going to tell you tonight, this is so much better than anything this world can offer. This has life in it. This has all kinds of blessings in it. We've got the Holy Spirit. What could be better than that than to have God the Holy Spirit in your life and to know that he's with you everywhere you go, that he speaks to us? that he guides us, he helps us, he leads us into truth, always with us all the time. How blessed we are. Anybody here been set free from something? Anybody been healed from something? Anybody here have some blessing? I mean, anybody get a word from God this morning, maybe in your devotional time, that God speak to you in some way? I'm just telling you that all of us have blessings. We have things in our life that we need to share with others. Now, I'm sure that this widow didn't think of herself as blessed. And when he asked her, he said, what do you have? She says, nothing except some oil. Didn't sound like much. And I think that a lot of the time, we as believers, we kind of forget how much we have. Nothing except this. Nothing except a little of that. And it's amazing how we can focus on the things where we think, you know, we don't have this, we don't have that, or we wish we had more. But we need to realize all of us has something. Even if you're just a baby Christian, even if you haven't really been serving God, living for God, I'm telling you, you've got something to work with. And you need to know tonight that God can take what you think is not much and he can bless it and cause it to become much, not only in your life, but in somebody else's life, that you can be a blessing to somebody else. So here's the message tonight. He told her to take what she had and to fill every vessel that she could find. She got to the last one, and I think she was wishing there was some more, but they had filled all the vessels, and it was more than enough. We need to take what we have and fill every vessel that we can find. I want to remind you that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, it talks about people as vessels. And it says that there are some to honor and some to dishonor, right? Right? I mean, some of them are fit for the master's use. They are vessels of honor. And then there's some that are vessels of dishonor. Come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about? I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people in this world, ungodly people, people not serving God. I mean, vessels of dishonor, they're full of all kinds of evil things. But you know what? We ought to pour into all of them. Every vessel, whatever God has blessed us with, we're blessed to be a blessing. And you know, I think sometimes we kind of get a worldly mindset about wanting to bless those that we think deserve it. Anybody else feel that way sometimes? We, we just want to bless the ones that we judge to be worthy. But no, we just need to be a blessing even to those vessels of dishonor, even to the ones that don't deserve it. That's the heart of our God, is to be merciful to the unrighteous. And I want to challenge you tonight to pour what you have into others every day. Look for an opportunity to pour into somebody else. Fill every vessel you can find. So what do you have? You know, that's the first question that you got to figure out tonight. And I hope that maybe some of the things I said already, you've realized you have some things to offer. Just consider the smallest amount of something maybe. Remember, she just had one jar of oil, but God multiplied it. And we need to understand that principle. You see, 
in the world, when you use something, it's just gone. But in the kingdom, when you use something, it gets blessed and multiplied. Remember the little boy that had two fish and five small barley loaves. Jesus took it and he fed 5,000 with it. And you just need to always remember that what you have may not seem like a lot. You know, you as a believer, you might not think you're very spiritual or that you can, you know, what do you have to offer? But let me tell you something, when you put it in the hands of Jesus, you can't imagine what he can do with it. Think about those around you, your loved ones, your family, your neighbors, your coworkers, well, friends, enemies, vessels. That's what they are. And I want to challenge you tonight to fill every vessel, the love of God. You know, you've got to always start with the love of God. It doesn't matter what gifts you have. The Bible tells us that if we don't have love, then we're nothing. If we don't have love, see, whatever gifts we have, no matter how great they are, you can have all faith to move mountains, but if you don't have love, they don't have anything. So let's just start there. Because you know what? The love of God is something that every believer has. The Bible says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We have the love of God on the inside of us. Now, you might not have much of it, but if you start giving it away, I want to tell you what will happen. It'll just keep multiplying. It'll just keep multiplying. Think of it like that oil that you pour it in. See, you help others. You build others up. You encourage others. You just keep pouring it in and your supply is never going to run out. No, it just keeps flowing. It just keeps coming. As long as there's another vessel, I want to tell you the Holy Spirit will give you love to share, to bless, to help others. It'll just keep going. Keep pouring something good into them. Have you got anything, anything worth having? Have you got anything good that you can give to somebody else, that you can bless somebody else, that you can put into somebody else? You know, it could be a family member, a coworker, an old enemy. There's some really hard cases. Anybody know a hard case? Pour something good into them. You know, the Bible says love never fails. So you just keep loving them. Keep loving them. Don't give up on people. Keep loving them. See, sometimes I think Christians get the wrong idea. I know about this because I have experienced it myself. I've been this way sometimes where we think we need to straighten people out. How's that working? I don't know about you, but I don't have too good of success rate at straightening people out. But the Bible never tells us to go straighten people out. You know what it tells us to do? Love people. That's what we're supposed to do. And it's amazing how when we do that, that God moves and God works in those people's lives. Be kind to those that don't deserve it. See, it's like rubbing oil on an old baseball glove. You just keep rubbing it in there and it'll soften up. And you know what? You just keep loving people. It'll soften them up. Might take a while. I mean, I've met some crusty old goats that it just didn't seem like it's ever going to work. But you know what? We just need to keep pouring that oil in and let God the Holy Spirit work through us to help those people. Be kind to them even when they don't deserve it. Is it listen, it's the Holy Spirit that puts that love in your heart. Jesus said, the Father gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask. We've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, the greater one living inside of us. It is the one who is love. He lives on the inside of us. And oh, how we just need to realize we've got a constant supply. It's never going to run out. As long as there's another vessel, we've got something to give. 
pray for somebody. Here's a way you can pour out. You pour out your heart in prayer for somebody else. Now, one of the ways you can do that, you can pray for them in intercessory prayer. You can also pray for them. Did you know that the vast majority of people, almost no one will turn away prayer if they're in need? Almost everybody, if you say, can I pray for you? They'll say yes. Amazing. And why do we pass up that opportunity? You know what? A lot of the time, if, if you said to somebody, hey, can I talk to you about Jesus? You know what? A lot of the time, people are going to just get nervous. They're not really ready for that. They're not, you know, they're not really looking for that conversation. And I, I want to tell you, if you're led of the Holy Spirit to just boldly ask somebody, do you know Jesus and want to talk to him about Jesus, then you need to do that. But here's something that all of us can do is say, can I pray for you? Or you can, you can even say, what could I pray for you about? And pray for them later. But oh, people need that. But here's a way you can pour into people is to pray for people. What a powerful thing to do. In fact, it's one of the most powerful things you could ever do for anybody is to pray for somebody. But whatever way the Lord has blessed you, whatever God has done in your life, whatever he's given to you, Jesus says it in Matthew 10, 9. He says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils freely you've received, now freely give. Whatever you've received, freely you've received, now freely give. Keep pouring, don't stop. Anybody know any vessels that aren't full, not full of God, not full of good things? You got any faith? Anybody got a little faith? Do you know Jesus said it doesn't take much? He says, if you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed. Amen. You can speak to that mountain or you can speak to that mulberry tree, be pulled up and cast it, planted in the sea. It'll obey you. You got a little bit of faith? Pour it into somebody. There's so much fear and doubt and unbelief in our world right now. So many people are struggling in their faith. Can you speak a word of faith to them? Share a scripture with them. What's well, amazing what power there is in the word of God to bring faith to somebody's heart. And you know what? I find that a lot of the time, it's not that they don't, they don't know the promise of God. A lot of the time, it's just that we forget. and We need to be reminded of the word of the Lord. We need to be reminded of the promise of God. And so I encourage you tonight, you don't have to know a whole lot of the Bible. Do you know one verse? That one verse might be just what somebody needs. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. There's a lot of bad reports, a lot of negative stuff going on in our world. In fact, the truth is, is there, there are some bad things happening in our world. But did you know it's just like the, the, the 10 spies that came back with a bad report from the promised land? They made it worse than it was. And it's the same way in our world today. Let me tell you, we need to be those that have a word that brings faith, a word that turns people's attention to the Lord and gets people's focus on God instead of just on all the negatives and all the bad things going on in our world. But speak faith, pour faith into somebody. Do you know, Jesus never spoke unbelief to anybody. Think about that. Jesus always said things like, with God, all things are possible. See, we need to remember this is who our savior is this is what he's like and this is how we should be with people in this world that we're always encouraging them always building up always strengthening their faith but realize that word of god that you have even if you just got a little bit that word has the power in it to set free that word has power in it to heal that word has power in it to bring forgiveness, to bring salvation to somebody. There's power in the word of God. I knew a lady one time 
that she would just kind of spout scriptures at people. And it seemed so awkward because many times the scriptures that she would quote at people, it didn't even apply to their situation or what they were going through. And it was kind of like a religious thing that she just went around splatting people with these scriptures. And I don't mean that by any means, but I'm just telling you that if we're sincere and wanting to help people, God will give you a word to share with somebody else, to pour into somebody else. And that word is powerful. Speak the word of God to people. I keep thinking, man, how awesome would it be? I'm not not promoting social media. I don't want anybody to misunderstand me here. If you don't have a Facebook account, you don't need to go get one. But I'm just going to say this. How awesome would it be if we who are on social media all used it every day to promote Jesus? How awesome would that be if we put scriptures and said things that lifted up the Lord and blessed people and helped people instead of all this little catty cutty junk and talking about everything else under the sun? How awesome would it be if we just used that as a way to pour into other people? Okay, enough meddling, right? Keep going, preacher. It's just easy. You know what? It's easy to be negative. It's easy to tear down. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. Necessary edification. No corrupt communication, but only what's good for edification. Necessary. You know what? It's necessary. Everybody needs to be built up. Now, I just want to make this point before I go any further. If you hadn't picked up on this already, most of the way that we can pour into other people, it has to do with what's coming out of our mouth. That's a big part of how we can pour into somebody else is by the things that we say. And I read in the scripture that we're supposed to bless and not curse. We Listen, when we're cursed, the Bible says, Jesus said himself, we bless. Well, they said this, so I'm going to say this. No, we're going to bless. Jesus says, when you get cursed, you bless. And the Bible also tells us that blessing and cursing shouldn't be coming out of the same fountain. I want to remind you, listen, we'd all like, we all like good, clean water. Now, how about if we just mix in a little nasty, stagnant, rotten, smelling water with it also? I mean, we'll, we'll have a whole gallon of clean water. We'll just put one ounce of nasty, stinky, smelly water in it. Who wants to drink it? Nobody. And you know what? That's exactly where a lot of us live a lot of the time. No, we need to keep it where we don't have anything coming out of our mouth, but that which would bless somebody else and edify others, build others up. Somehow we get this idea. Well, you know, we don't want them to get puffed up. Well, they got too much pride already. So, we're going to bring them down to size. Did you know that's God's job, not yours? You know, when it comes to ourselves, I always say, you know, the Bible says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and in due time, he will exalt you. So, you do your job, and you let God do his. You don't ever do God's job, or he'll do yours. But you know what? It's also true about other people. There's nowhere in the Bible where it tells us to humble other people. Nowhere in the Bible where it tells us to tear somebody else down. Listen, if they need to be humbled, that's God's job. But there's so many places that tell us that we're to build others up, that we're to encourage others. 
And you see, we just need to learn to do this every day where we're just constantly pouring into others. See, before your kids leave to go to school in the morning, fill them up. Fill them up with good things before your spouse heads out the door. Fill them up with something good. I'm preaching good right now. By the grace of God, help it, Lord. <laughs> Hebrews 3.13 says, encourage one another once a year. Well, that's not right, is it? In the NIV, it says, encourage one another daily. Daily. Can you muster up? I just say, I just don't have anything. Can you muster up just one encouraging thing to say? You use it, and God will give you another and another. I knew a young lady one time that God had just, he really had used her. And one day she said to me, though, she said, I'm just tired. I'm tired of being the one that has to encourage others. I'm just tired. I want you to know, God can refresh you and strengthen you, and he's the one. See, she, was looking, she felt like she should be getting back more from other people. And sure, we all feel that way sometimes, maybe. But we need to realize that God is the one that refills us. He's the one that refreshes us, gives us what we need to keep going and to keep being a blessing to somebody else. But we all need to be encouraged. Encourage one another daily. Now, the English word for encourage, it's just real simple. It's in courage. It's two words stuck together, in courage. You see, when you encourage somebody, you're pouring courage into them. And you know what? We all need courage to live for God. We all need courage to obey God, to fulfill the plan of God, the will of God in our life. Have anybody seen somebody not really fulfilling God's plan, their, his, God's will in their life? You know what they need? They need somebody to encourage them, to put courage in. You know, when Joshua was getting ready to go into the promised land, to lead the children of Israel into the promised land, the Lord said to him, in fact, he said it several times, but in Joshua 1, 9, he says, have not I commanded you be strong and of a good courage. You see, Joshua had to have a lot of courage to lead the children of Israel into that promised land. And you know what? Whatever it is that God gives us to do, listen, if God's in it, it's going to take faith. It's going to take courage. And you see, we need to be putting courage into one another every day. That's why the Bible says, encourage one another daily. Everybody's got fears to deal with. Everybody's got some giants. Everybody has some battles that they're going to fight, and they need courage so that they're ready. You got just a little courage. See, some of it, you think, oh, well, I'm not one of those. You got just a little. Encourage somebody else. Yours will start growing. Pour it into somebody else. God will give you more. Dan Rather was a boxer in high school, and he said it was a wonderful feeling if you ever got knocked down the first time that you get back up, it was like a personal victory. It was just an amazing feeling. But in boxing, it's different, you see, from a lot of other sports where you're on a team. It's, it's just up to you, except for one thing. He said, a lot of the time, the one thing that would help you in that moment was somebody in your corner saying, get up, get up, get up. And I want to tell you, there's a lot of people that need somebody in their corner rooting for them. Somebody in their corner saying, you can do it, get up. Keep pouring. I want to straighten them out. No, keep pouring into them. Keep loving them. Keep praying for them. Keep helping them. You know, the best way to get that junk out is to keep pouring good things in. Just keep pouring good things in. 
You know, it seems like you just can't help some people, right? Oh, come on. I say it a lot, just can't help some people. I said it to my wife this week. That's what I say when she won't listen to me. I say, you just can't help some people. I'm glad y'all laugh. See, some people don't know I'm joking. You know, they see me anyway. Here's what I want to say. When it seems like you can't help some people, try anyway. Try anyway. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes you cast the seed and it falls on hard soil. But how do you know? And I want to tell you, some of the ones that will turn to God, some of the ones that will, will receive what you said, I'm, I'm telling you, you can't guess. You can't judge. Because some, sometimes it's some of those that seem to be pretty good. They're the ones that think they don't need anything. And sometimes those that seem to be the worst are the ones that are desperate for something. And they're ready. They're open and receptive. But I want to tell you where you can always find some empty jars that are ready to receive. Work with children. One of the most exciting things about working with children and young people also is they're like vessels with no lids. It's also why if you're a parent, you got to be so careful to protect them. They can be so easily influenced sometimes. But that humility, that meekness of a child, it makes them so receptive you know, and when it comes to spiritual things, you know, they just accept the Lord so quickly, so easily. I'm going to say it one more time. You want to pour into some people and just see God move and work and quickly and freely? Oh, well, work with children. By the way, the best time to reach a drug addict now, I say it often, but it needs to be said a lot. The best time to reach a drug addict is when they're a child so they never become that drug addict. If you catch somebody doing something right, encourage them. And when you see somebody doing wrong, encourage them. Anybody excited about Jesus? You know, the Bible says in Romans 12, 11, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Jesus was zealous for the house of God. Surely, with God's help, you can muster up a little bit of zeal a little bit of enthusiasm. I mean, you might, you might think your wood's wet. But with just a, just a little bit, and you start sharing that with somebody else, you know what'll happen? You might start getting excited about Jesus. You just start sharing what you do have. You pour into somebody else and God will give you more. Zig Ziglar said, enthusiasm is more contagious than the measles or chicken pox. Once you have it, it'll spread to your family and your church. Enthusiasm, it's contagious. Share it with other people. One guy that owned a Gulf, station, Gulf service station, he'd been told that enthusiasm would really impact his business and produce results. So he got all of his guys that worked for him together and he he told them all, he says, now everybody that comes in here and wants something done to their car, I want you to talk to them about how important it is to have their oil filter changed. And so they all started doing that and explaining to all the customers why it's important to have your oil filter changed. He said he had, that week they sold, their oil filter sales went up 700%. Now here's the point. I know it's just a silly little story, but here's the point. What if we were excited about Jesus? What if we were excited about church? What if we just decided, you know what, everybody, 
We're not talking about an oil filter here. What, what if we just decide, you know, everybody I have the chance, I'm going to invite them to church this week. Now, come on, y'all don't get quiet on me. Y'all a bunch of crazy people came out to church on a Wednesday night. You're not afraid to go to church. And you know what? There's some other people out there. They're ready. They're ready. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know a whole lot of people already had the coronavirus and other people already got the vaccination and some of them, they never cared anyway. But I'm just saying, it's time. It's time for us to start inviting people to church. And I want you to know, as a pastor, I'm not going to pressure somebody that feels uncomfortable. I mean, if they're still, you know, if they don't feel comfortable coming to church because of the coronavirus, I'm not going to pressure that person. I'm not going to put them, you know, on the spot. But I'm telling you, this, it's time for us to start inviting people to church again. And what if we were excited about it? I'm just telling you, if you're enthusiastic, if you're excited, you're pouring that into other people, you'd be surprised how it'll impact people's lives. You wouldn't want to go to church, would you? That might work with some people, I don't know. But what do you have? Do you got a smile? Some of you do, a few do. I can tell you this, you won't ever run out. Again, this might have, you know, might be different to say in the way things are right now, but you know what? Sometimes some people just need a hug. And I know you got to be careful about that with coronavirus right now, but sometimes people just need a hug. And you know what? You don't ever run out. You always got another one. I'm just telling you, we all have something to give. If we'll just pour into other people and just keep pouring in, we can have a big impact on our world, on those that are in our world, those that we cross paths with, those that we have the opportunity. I'm just telling you, we can make such a difference if we'll just start pouring into others. And here's the thing. God will always bless you. I want to remind you of the words of the Lord Jesus who said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Oh, what a blessing it is to be able to pour into others and give and be used of God in that way. She ran out of vessels. But you know what? The Lord will always bring another vessel our way if we've got something to pour in, and we do. So my challenge to you tonight, don't wait. Don't just put this on the shelf, but you just make up your mind. You're going to be a blessing to somebody. You're going to pour something into somebody. Look for an opportunity before you even get home tonight. Say something to encourage your kids in the car. However it happens, just look for that opportunity. Some of you go home and jump on Facebook, say something that'll bless somebody else, lift somebody else up, all right? Well, stand with me. We're going to pray.